Hi there, I'm Dorfus, and welcome to my dank and cluttered garage. You've probably heard the term barn find before. A barn find, if you haven't heard the term, usually refers to a classic and rare car that has mysteriously shown up in the middle of nowhere for no good reason. I am indeed in the land of barns in New England, but in a recent excursion to a barn owned by a local television channel, yep, that's a thing up here, I found something entirely unlike a car. For a certain subset of retro game enthusiasts, though, this particular discovery may actually be a little more interesting than a vintage vehicle. When we first talked to the TV station about checking out the barn, we asked if they had any older CRT TVs. They did, we were told, and hey, good timing, because they were about to recycle and dispose of the contents of that barn soon. Now, looking at this thing, uh, initially, my thought was probably exactly the same as yours is about it. It's one of those huge Sony Trinitron HD CRTs from the early aughts. We know those kind of suck. They have crazy input lag, they have terrible handling of 240p and 480p signals, and they're, they're not good for gaming of any kind. They're definitely not light gun games. Those don't work at all. But then, after getting it back, I noticed that it had a couple of things that I hadn't seen on any HD CRT before. Yeah, it, it does say Trinitron on the upper left, but it also says High Vision on the upper right. I had heard about this format in a Tecmoan video years ago, and I was, I was pretty well aware of just how difficult it is to view content created in this archaic Japan-only HD format. You may also have heard of it by another name, Muse. What you see playing on it now is actually a Hitachi High Vision Muse demo disc, uh, ripped off of YouTube and put back up here. Exactly what somebody would have been playing on it or on a similar television in Japan in the mid-90s. This TV is KW-36HDF9. Yes, Sony has always been terrible at naming their products. This thing retailed for 520,000 yen in 1998. A custom matching stand was also available for an additional 35,000 yen. The USD value of this set, if bought in 1998 with US dollars, uh, would have been around $3,700, I think. Uh, now, if you factor in uh, inflation and the difference between the dollar now and the dollar then, this thing probably sold for the equivalent of around $7,000. That's insane if I'm working all that out correctly. Additionally, it probably cost a boatload to get this thing shipped from Japan to New England. Uh, the stand alone, just the cost of the stand, probably was more than all of the televisions my family had in our house in 1998. So yeah, this TV, definitely entirely Japanese. It's over 100 pounds, and I have no idea why it was imported here, other than a couple of clues given to us by the station manager. He explained that it was used briefly to monitor multiple video cameras during a large move and then it was packed back away in its custom flight case. It is so heavy that Sony saw fit to put special spring-loaded handles into the side. There are two comfortable little grips on each, uh, each corner of this television. Y you're gonna need two or three people to move it though. It is heavy and unwieldy. Another thing about this that I thought was super weird is that it's actually painted silver. It, it's not silver plastic like every other TV uh, that came after it. Um, it came with this little scratch you can see right here at the top, and uh, you can see that the material underneath, it's actually dark, like the rest of the TV. I, I kind of wonder if this is the first iteration of that silver TV trend that we saw back then. The one in my office from the same year, uh, it's a standard American 27-inch Trinitron, that one is just regular black plastic. So moving around to the, the back of this thing, which is, is no easy feat, especially in my cluttered garage, we're gonna find another massive Sony uh, logo cast in bold black plastic. It's, um, it's flanked by more uh, gigantic comfortable handholds, which is nice. Um, and there are a bunch of interesting uh, inputs for Muse specific devices. I, I'd love to try those out someday, but I don't have anything that can play back Muse content. 
The uh, HD DVD connections, though, those do allow for modern components to be connected through a simple scaling or just conversion device. Uh, this television can actually shockingly accept up to 1080p converted to component from HDMI. I, I don't think it can actually display that, but the signal seems to be just fine from it. Around front, though, this, this is where the real magic is. There is an RGB DB15 connector, a VGA connector. This is what initially caught my eye, and uh, this is where we get the real surprise of this set. This high vision, when connected to a Dreamcast over RGB, is natively 480p, or, or some version of it. You know, actually, I'm not really sure I know enough about this display technology to really definitively state what it is and isn't native on it, but, but get this. You can plug in a light gun to your Dreamcast, and you can play House of the Dead 2 on this thing no issues whatsoever. It doesn't work over S-Video or Composite, but when you connect over RGB, you are in flavor country. Everything is completely spot on, and it is so much better than playing on a consumer CRT. In general, RGB on this television from the Dreamcaster or from any other device has a richness and a quality to it that is really unmatched by anything that we had in the United States in this era. If you have a SCART RGB television now, one that was converted or something like that, you kind of can see what this was, but this is at a higher resolution and it just has a crispness and depth to it that's really fantastic. But yeah, so I got really excited that 480p light gun games worked. And I thought to myself, was there any way that 240p light gun games work? And they don't. Uh, I hooked up my Mr. FPGA with a PS1 gun con. I've tested this setup a number of times on my, uh, my consumer 27-inch set. Uh, it works great there. And it kind of works here. Like, it, it kind of works. You, you can sort of aim around, but it's it's just slightly off-center. It has something to do with the sync. I'm not totally sure. Um, I've tried plugging the gun con into a couple of different outputs in the back of the set, but nothing really seems to work. And it it is notable that in the original manual for this television, which I found and translated from Japanese, um, that it says that PS1 light gun games will not work on it. So they weren't lying. Um, it, it, that's, that's totally true. But on the other side, uh, with the Mr. FPGA, this is a handful of macro shots uh, that I took uh, of Chrono Trigger. And this is running in 240p RGB off of the Mr. Uh, going right into the high vision. It, it doesn't have the same look and feel of 240p on a PVM or, or consumer uh, TV set. Basically anything that's running at 15K, uh, 240p natively. But it's got its own charm. The line density, it, it seems really similar to the 32K 480p capable monitors that I, I have in Blast City and uh, New Net City in my office. What's really cool about this, and anybody who, who's picking up a TV now, an old CRT TV, uh, is going to be amazed by, this thing has its original remote. And wow, you really need the remote to get even a fraction of what this thing can do. It, it's a Pretty classic Sony looking remote from the era, but it's specific to this TV. Uh, for whatever reason, the number pad goes past 9 and all the way up to 15. I, I don't think I've seen that before. It's also got this really sassy little flip up panel that conceals uh, fancy multi input screen setups uh, and the TV's menu system. Uh, what's, what's really kind of getting me here is that this remote is from the late 90s, but it also turns on and partially operates our TV, our Sony TV that we got in 2020. Uh, I, I guess not much has changed in the world of remote signals, so go figure. The, the menus are, are, are pretty ordinary for a TV from this, this time period. Uh, I, I do love that the TV has picture modes that change the contrast and color for various types of content though. I did not take a video of it, but the High Vision has the full, elaborate, uh, custom setting menu that gives you calibration and geometry adjustments. But, you know, just as an aside here, like most of the 16 by 9 flat tubes that were made in this time period, it's got some geometry funkiness to it. Um, I think if I spent more time in those menus, though, I, I could probably get that sorted out a little bit better.
the inputs are are handled uh, pretty predictably. There there are just a lot of them. Uh, at some point, I'm going to see how many things I can get wired up to this and running simultaneously through the multi-screen system to see if I can recreate what they were talking about uh, with the big move at the television station. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the retro content. But how future-proof was this top-of-the-line television? It, pretty fantastically, actually, provided that you can convert an HDMI to a component signal like like I talked about before. Uh, there are outliers. Uh, I can't get my Steam Deck to work no, no matter what I do with it, even if I, I set it to like a TV safe mode. Um, but the Nintendo Switch works beautifully on this display. Uh, during testing of this thing, I actually ended up putting in like, I don't know, an hour or two uh, of Tears of the Kingdom. And I, I genuinely forgot that I was doing that on a 25 year old television. It is extremely hard to capture here with the camera. You, you probably see a lot of the aliasing, uh, but the picture is so crisp and the colors, they really come close to modern OLEDs. I am not saying that CRT technology is, is better than or equal to modern panels, but wow, it is actually pretty stunning how long it took flat panel modern technology to reach this watermark and surpass it. Oh, hey, but how about the PS5? The original manual, like I said before, actually has the PS1 in it, but the PS5 plays without issue. Uh, again, I spent a couple hours playing Ghost of Tsushima and Final Fantasy uh, on it, and uh, the PS5 was able to output to this display at both 720p and 1080p. I, I didn't notice much input lag from anything that I played here today, uh, but I'd really love to someday have this thing actually tested, just, just to be sure. There you have it. This high vision is an unexpected winner for both modern and retro content. I just wish there was more information available about it and its features. I have not even covered yet how incredible the sound quality is. This thing's got a freaking subwoofer inside it, in addition to the left and right drivers. No television on the market today comes close to the sound quality here. Frankly, if you know anything about the High Vision, drop me a line in the comments. I'd love to find out more. In fact, as, as far as I can tell, this is the only one out there at the moment. I went to Japan recently and asked around. CRT televisions in general are scarce there, let alone monstrosities like this one. I'd imagine this wouldn't have fit terribly well in most Japanese homes. Even in my normal-sized American home, it has to live in the garage because it's just too massive to fit in my office or our living room. So yeah. Please do reach out, leave a comment below. I would I would love to know more about this. Hey, and thanks so much for watching.